Welcome to a series called The End of Times where we're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to see what it is we could expect to happen, but more importantly, what it is we should be doing uh, at Christ's return because we all have a role in this. And as we've gone through this uh, incredible book verse by verse, we've reached that place of Christ's return and we've spent several episodes talking about his appearance and what that means and the fact that he comes to judge and make war and what that war looks like um, and then what it meant to put the dragon and a third of the angels, the fallen angels, into the pit for a thousand years. Why did the earth get a thousand years of rest? Uh, before the new earth comes around and he releases Satan once again. Uh, why did that have to happen? Um, but today we're going to kind of focus on the thrones that are established because once uh, Satan um, and the demons are locked away, there's nobody uh, causing chaos on the earth anymore. So it is calm and peaceful and Jesus Christ is literally reigning on earth as king uh, just as he does in heaven. And here we see that thrones are established. So we're going to focus on these thrones. Who sits on them? Who is passing judgment? So we'll pick it up where we left off. Revelation 20, starting in verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So ultimately what it says here is that there were some thrones established and they were given authority to pass judgment. Whoever's sitting on these thrones has authority to pass judgment and it's them. It's, it's not just Jesus passing judgment at this point. Other people have been given authority. So who are these people? Uh, because the only resurrected at this point are those who died during tribulation. So the rest of the world, all of humanity from Adam and Eve on are still asleep in this moment. It is only those people who were alive at Christ's return or died for Jesus Christ during tribulation. And then thrones are established and then there's these people judging. So we're going to kind of focus on, well, who are these people and what exactly are they judging? Um, so there's a couple things we can say, well, for sure there's certain people there on these thrones uh, because of the word of God. And then there's some that we kind of got to dig a little deeper to figure out, well, who are the rest of them? Uh, so let's go to Matthew 19 because it, it, there are some definitive answers here. We'll go to Matthew 19. Starting 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men that is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So there'll be at least 12 thrones established uh, during this regeneration. Um, and the disciples will be sitting there judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, what that'll consist of is it'll consist of 144,000 uh, Jews who have been fighting for Jesus Christ and anybody who remains who is not killed in the war. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people, and we'll, you know, we'll get into who's being judged and why they're being judged. But f as far as when it comes to Israel, we know that it'll be the 12 disciples, of course, minus Judas, because he said, those of you who followed, <laughs> those of you kind of stayed with me till the end. All right, so, and we can see this again in Luke 22 uh, in, in a little more detail here. So we're going to go to Luke 22, starting verse 24. 
But there was also rivalry among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are all called benefactors. But not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who is governed as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table, or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. And I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So what we know, what we know for sure is that the twelve disciples will be judging the twelve tribes of Israel. They'll, there will be some thrones established for them and they will be judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We know that to be true. But in this war, in this war, those who have been resurrected and those who are still alive who fought for Jesus Christ, there were two categories of people. If we go back to Revelation 7, after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, on the sea. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth and the sea or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. And then we learned later that these are the 144,000 who, uh, they were virgins. They, they had a heart for God and they fought for God and they were given supernatural power and, and sustained in the warring of the saints for three and a half years. But in addition to them, if we also see who else was there, we go back to Revelation 7, 9. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribe, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Jump 14. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. So here you have two groups of people that, that will have been killed during the tribulation. Most of the 144,000 Jews and most of the saints, which is a multitude. It's, it says it, you can't count them. There's, there's so many of them that it can't be counted. So these are the two groups of people who are going to be uh, coming through the tribulation, whether they were killed during the tribulation or they survived. So they are alive, but it is only the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel that are being judged by the 12 disciples. What about everybody else? If we go to 1 Corinthians 6.1, Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So the twelve apostles will judge the Israel, but it is the saints that will judge the world. And if you really think about the saints ruling this world, possessing this world, and judging this world is, is what was always prophesied would be so. And a thousand years of his kingship on this earth, on this earth with humanity, uh, there's going to be a lot of reproduction taking place over those thousand years, as we learned last time. And there will have to be thrones established throughout this earth. Um, so it was the saints that will judge the world. And, and by judge, I, it's not just judging, and we're going to talk about what it is they're judging at first, but it's also... Uh, ruling over that area, kind of like the, the earlier judges of Israel did. Uh, Daniel talked about this. If we go to Daniel 7, starting in verse 21. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. 
until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. In war, when you are victorious, you possess and rule the area that you were victorious over. It's the rules of war. It's the basic rules of war. And the saints will possess the earth. Uh, and they will rule as heirs with Jesus Christ. Uh, the apostles will judge Israel, but we will be judging the world. The saints will be the ones that judge the world. Um, and it's very important we begin to see what this possession of a thousand years of this earth looks like. And that's a lot of what it looks like. So what are we actually judging? Because if everybody's behaving perfectly for a thousand years, what is it we're judging? Well, there's a huge population of people on this planet that will still be alive that are not the saints. They just participated in some terrible behavior. If we go back to Revelation 13, starting verse 4, so they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And we'll jump to 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. This is what they are judging. This is what those who will sit on those thrones, whichever saints are chosen to be judges, and the apostles as well will sit and they will judge Israel and the world. Um, it's real important we begin to see that, that it, it, you know, because a lot of times when we look at Judgment Day, we, we see uh, Jesus and we kind of see, you know, well, are you in the book or not? You know, we're not there yet. That's not what this is. Uh, this is a different judgment day. This is judgment on earth of those people who walk on this earth and those who are resurrected in the first resurrection, which means they died in the warring of the saints, fighting on behalf of Jesus Christ. They are giving the gift of a thousand years of reigning with him uh, because they warred. Uh, but there's also a multitude of other people around that just kind of watched or observed or just caught it all on CNN or whatever. Those people have to be judged as well. Uh, so kind of putting all that together, uh, we know based on scripture that the 12 apostles will be judging Israel. Uh, that is not the job of the saints. Uh, the saints will be judging the world. Uh, so if we go back and we, for what they did, they, they, well, they killed a lot of people, un, an innumerable amount of people um, in the warring of the saints. Uh, they promoted the Antichrist. Uh, they received his mark. Uh, they have to be held accountable for those things as they stand on this earth, just as if you are guilty of war crimes. Uh, you will be held accountable for your war crimes and your participation in the warring of the saints. And that's what this judgment is all about. Uh, so if we go back to Revelation 20, starting in verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. When you take Satan, the great deceiver, and he has deceived the world from the very beginning. He deceived Adam and Eve and, and nothing has changed since the sin. Just more sin and death and more sin and death and more sin and death. When you take him out of the equation... We're still humans, and we have to be held accountable for our actions here on earth. 
Um, and that's what this judgment is about. And a lot of people, their eyes, when that deceiver is gone, they're, they're going to be really in a terrible situation. Um, real terrible situation. Uh, but those of us who are filled with the Spirit and are not deceived, uh, we will be reigning with Jesus for 1,000 years. Uh, so I hope this video helps. Uh, any thoughts or insight on any of this, definitely put that below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel to Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.